Okay, hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Artextures, and today we're doing our lesson on capes. You guys picked that in the poll, thank you for that so much. I'm gonna jump into it, I'm not gonna do all the fluff, and let's get into it. So today we're gonna be focusing just on capes. Uh, there's different type of capes. Just, everyone thinks that all capes are pretty much the same, like the superhero cape type of stuff, but there are different types of capes. They fall under different categories. They're used in different religions, or just different fashion styles, and all that stuff. I already have uh, these four, I'm just going to disclaim, again, like always, these drawings are not mine. These are just um, references I found on Pinterest. Um, I just use them as educational purposes to convey whatever we're trying to learn today. So that's pretty much it. That's the big disclaimer. So don't come at me, bro, when you see this. Uh, these drawings are not mine. And I'm referring to as these. Oh, I'm referring to it as these. These are not mine. These are just references I found on Pinterest and I think that was great for today's lesson so please 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 understand I did not draw these I'm not taking credit for any of these drawings I'm just taking credit for the drawings that I do on top of them just to show my uh, lesson for today okay so anyway I have my references right here I uh, the capes uh, there's two different capes this one I don't know what their names are I should have went by the names these type of capes are more like an open cape it's more for the double folds for females and yes we're going females today so that's what the capes are going to be and then we'll do males next week uh, because I think there's going to be a difference between them uh, probably there'll be more diversity when it comes to capes for males or probably more females I'm not really sure but anyway so uh, as you can see we're gonna go with this one first I do have uh, three or four uh, but so far the ones I found was only three and it doesn't seem like uh, there was much of a fourth one, so I'll figure out something for the last one, which will be this one. We'll go with this one, this one, and this one in order, so we know where we're going. Um, so we're going to go with this one just because I want to. There's no particular order while we're doing this. Uh, so basically, I'm going to time lapse it, and I'll explain why and what I did. So I'm just going to jump to that right now. Alright guys, I finally got to the end of this. I'm so sorry it took me this long, but as you can see, let me explain what I did here. Um, I know it's going to be a little bit hard to understand because it's all scratchy and stuff, but uh, what I'm trying to convey here with the, with the capes is that always remember you must understand your fabric. Um, I don't understand, I don't really know the name exactly of the fabric that's here, but as you can see it's more, it's heavy-ish, it's heavy. Uh, heavy but yet thin and because it's heavy and thin as you can see here the folds one two three four and five and the other two in the back you can see that the lines here are much long and drab because the heavier the individual is, the more less wrinkles you get, but more lines, more folds you get. There will be more folds, the bigger and heavier the fabric there is. It was thin and, um, I'll say thin and non-heavy. There will be a lot of wrinkles, a lot of folds, a lot of cr um, 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 creases, all that stuff. So that's something you should look for and be very aware of the material of the, uh, the fabric you're trying to put on your characters or anything like that. Um, if you look closely at these things, because these things are very important to look into, to know the fabric, uh, the heaviness, the thinness, the thickness, if it's made out of leather, if it's made out of um, uh, 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 cotton or anything like that, because it can change the, the very dynamic of how the, 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 the actual fabric like behaves and all that stuff. So you should look out for that. Remember, 
heavy and thin, long lines. Uh, if it's like tight, can't spell today. Tight, mm. tight and thin, a bunch of wrinkles. Well, actually, no, not even tight. If it's tight, it'll be little, 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 um, tight wrinkles, little wrinkles to show like the tightness of the fabric itself. But if it's like medium thin, then there's going to be a bunch of wrinkles. There's going to be some tight wrinkles. There's going to be some long wrinkles, depending on what type of uh, shirt, cape, or even pants you wear. So we're going to move on to the next one. We're going to move on to this one. This one's more similar like the last one, but this one is more like uh, exotic because one has this, uh, what do you call it? The scarf that's kind of built in there to give it more of a uh, specific, uh, sophisticated look. I guess this is something we're in more in fashion or like winter time or even for like Middle Eastern um, uh, 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 fashion wear or something like that. So we're gonna do this one and then we'll do the cape one with the superhero cape and then I'll think of something else for the fourth one, but if not, then I might just ignore it. But this is something you guys gotta look for. Like I said, long and heavy means long lines. Long lines with heavy fabric that is thin, or if it's thick, then it's just gonna be giant folds. Long giant folds, that's very important. Always remember that. All right, so let me go to the next one. Okay guys, so I went down more of, um, I can say this was not all that great, but this one was a lot more challenging, I think, than the last one. Because you can see all the wrinkles I put in in this one because of the fabric that is here. It's thin. I forgot. What's, I think it's called satin. I think it's called satin, um, uh, fabric, um, wear where it's like really thin, really soft really like just just it can just go virtually anywhere um when it comes to the shading because uh how uh, thin it pretty much is uh i try my best to get that effect but i don't think i did it very well with the whole um what do you call it uh shading because the tension is coming from pretty much where area falls at i forgot to put some folds in there should that's what i should have did but i didn't uh but the folds will probably be somewhere around here and here and here. Uh, but you can see that most of the folds are stemming from here around the, the, the neck because of how the wrapping of the satin um, neck um, part of the cape is working, uh, well, um, behaving. So I should have put more folds there, really put more folds there to be more authentic to what I was looking at, but I give it more like this, this like basic uh, hoodie type 
uh, cape thing. Uh, I didn't give it a hoodie, but that's pretty much what it is. Uh, so next time, I have to be more aware of that. So always make sure that shading is part of the process when you're making your folds, because that is important. You know your shape language, like for instance, you know the shape. Don't know the exact shape. There won't be a name for this, but make up your shapes here, like for the shadows, or here, or here, or here. Like these shadows will make and break your your uh, authenticity with um with your um with your fabrics because the shadows actually make up most of the folding or the wrinkles there there is so that's something you guys should look for and know your form and it's going with the form of the the subject when I say go with the form like going that plays around the body just don't put like a wrinkle here. Like for instance, I'm gonna use a blue. Just don't put a wrinkle anywhere. It's just gonna look like a line. Try to make it make sense, like make it curve with the body at hand. Because when you do this, it'll feel more realistic. Well, not real, well, it'll, it'll, it'll make more sense. Let's just put it that way. If you just do that. But if you just put lines anywhere just for the sake, because you don't know, that makes no sense. You should put the lines and the wrinkles where the joints are, where the tension is. So like for instance, on this shoulder, there is tension because the tension is smooth out here. Tension and the falling of the, the, um, the uh, what do you call it? The, the wrinkles and the creases are here because it's falling down because gravity is pulling it down. So the wrinkles will be going downwards most likely then. So if that makes sense to you, I hope it does. If it doesn't, I'll try to explain next time in another video. But hopefully that was close enough to get where I need to be. Um, we're going to do the third one, pretty much. And this one's a treat because this is from My Hero Academia. I was looking for one that had, uh, oops, that had, um, what can I say? Had, uh, like, a picture of the costume. But I just found just the, the character design version of it. So it doesn't really make a, much of a difference. It's just overall what it's supposed to represent so uh the outfit is here i think it's here it is uh nana shimura i think shimura, Sh shimura nana shimura the the teacher of all might from my hero academia who has passed away in the show uh not really a spoiler that's actually a thing but uh sh yeah i'm using her as an example or her costume as an example for this very thing we're not going to be drawing most of anything other than just the cape. I'll input these other things if it's hard to see or what case may be, but it's just all about the cape itself. So what that means is we're just focusing on the cape mostly. So it's just how it falls down and how it reacts. So we're going to do that right now. So I think the red is, is doing just fine. So I'm going to stick with red still. And I'll be right back and I'll explain uh, what I did with uh, Nana's um, outfit. All right, guys, so I did pretty much the cape. Um, I know some stuff are a little bit hard to see, as I mentioned before, but if you bear with me here, it's not that hard. Um, now, the cape here seems to be either medium thin or at least thin thin. So meaning it's extremely lightweight, it's going to wrinkle a lot and stuff like that. But it seems like the fabric's kind of in between middle and, th and just, just pretty much thin. 
uh, just borderline uh, not even tight like like just literally it's just a normal cape so it what it does it, it will bend it will behave like any other cape like anything that will, any wind that will get it will, it will flap and stuff like that so it's not a special type of fabric if anything uh, nothing close to like a towel because it was a towel I don't think it would be able to uh, behave the way it does like in the show um, based on the sketch here there is tension on the shoulders which I should put more tension there and define the shoulders a little bit more better but uh, you can see that I'm not putting a bunch of wrinkles most of it is just based on folds the folds here shows in the in, in the shadows uh, right here uh, and here because the sh folds indicate a big um, uh, behavior of wind passing by that's why it looks like it can it looks like it's kind of flapping and not in the wind but it's flapping um, uh, there is movement there is wind here you can see it as I'm putting my arrow like wiggle with it so you can see that alongside this you see here and here and here you can see the, the the folds and the curves in and all that stuff um i won't say that the hoodie doesn't look all that great i'm gonna just i pretty much ignored it uh at this point but there's something that you guys should realize when i did this i don't know if you guys watched the or slowed down um the video when i time lapsed it because you can do that i think it's in the corner in the right hand corner where you can uh put the time sync um put the the speed of, of the video here on youtube um not on instagram sadly sorry for you guys but you guys see it on instagram but um you can see that every time i did a drawing um of oh did i uh -oh. uh oh i think i erased most of the other shirts oh no oh well it's fine it's it's perfectly fine you guys can always refer back to it on the video but um you can see that uh when i made the clothing it's a lot like doing hair i've noticed something or anything if you put in like the forms pretty much of any type of uh outfit or anything like that and it goes alongside with the the, the form of the body it'll pretty much look realistic and when i say forms i didn't go into detail first and putting all the details what I realized when I was doing this was I just put the shapes of what the shirt was going to look like, the outer shape, and then uh, uh, put in the details soon after. So for instance, let's go back to, let's just say, uh, this outfit. Uh, what I did was, let me move, like for instance, I'm going to just go back as a referral. I mean, I, I'm not, I don't even think I'm going to even do the, the fourth one. Um, really I'm just gonna make a quick demonstration and then we'll call it a day because most of it just refer it, it's literally the old stuff I mentioned like long out um, long heavy outfits are gonna be big folds big lines tight outfits that are like skin tight are you gonna have little to little to no lines especially around the joints area under the armpits or around the breast depending on how big and how uh, much uh, mass they have um, the crotch area depending on how tight and what the movements like because like if the characters like I mentioned from e Evangelion are wearing those uh, skin tight suits the chance of you seeing any real wrinkles will be little to none uh, but if it's something loose like uh, like this cape here it will have a bunch of folds bunch of um, wrinkles creases you know you name it wrinkles whatever so that's something you should very aware of like I said before um, but the last thing I want to mention when doing this is that make the shape first as in draw the shape out or shape first that makes more sense to do than trying to do all the details first and I think that's the problem we keep getting caught up into the actual details itself and stop forgetting that we're just we're just trying to draw we're not trying to be like Picasso or something so um, like I said let me use let me just outline this so is an outline literally when you start draw 
the outline first on what you want it to be. Because this will help understand where your outfit is going with this. So. Ed, Ed, I'm trying to finish, I'm trying to finish your snoring. It's in the background. Okay, so uh, with the outline in the back, like oh, outline in the back, <laughs> the outline out here will represent what it looks like. So all you need to do is then put in the shapes, like uh, the lines here, uh, here, oh, Almost right. uh, here, here, and when I say lines, you put in the lines in and then you can shade them out like this. Like, and then, oh, that's not looking right. Yeah, like that. So you put the lines in to show the, the layers in. That's that's the point why I mean by lines. And then after that, you can put your shades in to indicate what you want to do with your bodies and stuff like that. So yeah, so always make a literal shape first when making your poncho slash cape. Then you come in with the lines, especially if it's going to overlap. And be very cognizant of the um, the outline. Don't make it too square because then you get, you're still gonna just make more work for yourself. Try to be as fluid as possible with the li with the lines. So like this and like this. Just be as fluid as possible. See that? It feels more natural when you just fluidly do it like that. I didn't have to do much work. I just literally let my 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 uh, pencil do most of the guiding with my wrist and just loosen up. This is something you should master when it comes to fabric. And once you get to that point, you can win um, and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not gonna go in full detail on that one here right here because I already much explained it. But if there's something I, if I didn't touch upon. We got confused that I'll do it again. Uh, I'll even put a uh, more detailed version of this on my Patreon so you guys can have something exclusive to look at that you won't get on uh, YouTube and all that good stuff. So with that said, I hope this helped you guys out there. I know this was not um, super like detailed detailed in my, in my opinion. Uh, it was pretty much quick and to the point. It was just mostly about the folds uh, what fabric uh, you're, you're using, uh, how heavy, how tight, how small, I mean how tight, how heavy, how medium size uh, are your, your, your material is, how thin it is and how thick it is because it's really thick. Uh, it may fold more but it won't wrinkle as much. If it's thin it's going to wrinkle a lot but not, but it'll fold as I think even more but then again it's not going to be just folds only if that makes sense. Um, and just be cognizant of your lines and going with the flow. When you go with the flow with the form, as in the body, uh, you will get better results in, that, in that, that regard. So be very aware of that. Practice this. Practice your forms. Practice how to like wrap around clothing around a body or like a piece of rock. Or not rock, like a square or a cylinder or anything like that or any type of shape, you know. So that's something you guys should uh, practice doing. I still need some practice on this particular thing because uh, the behavior of a fabric can be very tricky depending on what you're trying to do and try to get real complex with it. Uh, but just do your best. I know it's gonna be a little bit difficult at first, but once you get the hang of it, this will be second nature. You can make pretty much any fabric you want. Uh, in any exotic way you want uh, for your characters or a case may be. Uh, so with that said, thank you guys so much for coming in. I'm Jace Reaver and if you want to support, go to the Patreon, um, uh, go to the TikTok, go to all the social medias that I mentioned at the beginning of this. 
If you want to support, it'll help a lot. Subscribe, hit that like button. It really does help me and everything else. If you also want to contact me, I'm usually on Instagram where you can usually find me if you have any questions uh, and stuff like that. But if you want more exclusive stuff that will go more in depth in these type of things, please subscribe to the Patreon because I'll be making videos for that as well. So you guys have uh, more, expen oh, more expensive, more uh, premium like uh, information on how to construct your clothing, your characters, and all that great stuff. So with that said, which I keep saying, later guys. Our texture shot, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.